First of all, good morning, everybody. We're glad to be here with you. Uh, today, we're going to present the project design of a biomedical soft robotic device for lower limbs, mechanical muscle rehabilitation, and blood flow stimulation under reduced gravity space environments. Um, well, the team of authors are Victor Diacuri, me, Jose Cornejo, author Aurora Diaz, and Neil Castrejon. This project is developed under the supervision and management of the Biosonautics and Space Mechatronics Research Group, which, ha which has been established in January 2019 as the first professional research group in Latin America as part of the Mars Society. Currently, it's an, it is an autonomous international group. and We have members from Ibero-America countries uh, working together to develop innovative technologies to support the space human medicine, space veterinary medicine, and space physics and engineering divisions to improve the quality of life and exploration on Earth and space, especially in the Moon and Mars. So uh, let's talk about a little about the background of the project. It all started with, a, with this publication, this first publication in 2020, and an IEEE conference, while future perspective and future papers uh, were accepted at the, an, another IEEE conference in 2021. 20, also, the project was presented at the Space Chi Workshop 2021, uh, organized by MIT, MIT Media Lab, NASA, among many other organizations, such as Politecno, Politecnico di Milan. And now it is an honor to be able to participate in the 2021 Mars University Symposium. Thank you so much for that. Um, well, let's start. Humanity has always wanted to discover, know, understand, and explore beyond our horizons. Space travel is one of the most fantastic aspirations for humankind, where the Earth is no longer our limitation, and there is no any limitation for this. Hence, space exploration missions and permanent bases on the Moon is the first gateway for human space exploration, and Mars, the first milestone to become a multiplanetary species, have been planned for the coming decades. However, space is indeed the most dangerous environment for future human space travelers due to the extreme conditions such as radiation, temperature, and especially the reduced and hypogravity environment, which can negatively affect musculoskeletal and cardiovascular health in astronauts, for example, generating disease-induced muscle atrophy and impaired blood circulation. In this context, mechanical stimulation allows for muscle development and promotes blood circulation and has multiple biomechanical, physiological, neurological, and psychological implications. Well, um, the mechanical manipulation of the human body soft tissues by applying rhythmic force on a specific area of the muscles and the skin generates um, a precursor or tonal pressure, which has, as I said, uh, multiple therapeutic effects. The implications of mechanical muscle stimulation range from biomechanical, physiological, and neurological responses. Therefore, the application of these forces uh, improves muscle performance by increasing muscle strength, speed, and power. However, conventional robotics um, are made of rigid materials, limiting the ergonomics and safety required for interaction with soft human tissues. I mean, we are made of soft tissues like muscle and skin. So um, here we propose a soft robotic. In this context, soft robotics are a very convenient technology for space biomedical applications due to the gentle, safe, comfortable and ergonomic interaction with soft tissues. Furthermore, this technology allows generating complex movements capable of emulating bio-inspired behaviors with advantageous results in medical treatments. In this presentation, we propose and describe the design of a medi novel medical robot using soft robotic system for mechanical muscle stimulation or lower limbs during space traveling and colonization. The system is composed of soft pneumatic actuators uh, placed on um, anatomical strategic points, which apply focused or tonal rhythmic pressure to the main muscles involved in the physiological gait in order to stimulate them and induce the blood flow in the lower limbs. So um, the design of these soft pneumatic actuators, or also known as SPA, provides the capacity to stimulate the muscles during the hypogravity exposure to avoid atrophy and promote blood flow in the lower limbs. For the fabrication, we used the hyperelastic silicon ground skin 30 because of its higher junk modulus than other silicon materials and also for being ideal for relating application. Additionally, we used the polyethylene terephthalate, or also known as PET, to make that zero air chamber and prioritize only one direction deformation 
because a PET is both extensible and flexible. With these materials and design features, the SPA is mechanically programmed since it concentrates the deformation energy towards one direction and limits in the direction not required. Additionally, the manufacturing process would be significantly reduced. Uh, I mean, an easy manufacturer. Now, the system consists of SPAs embedded in a silicon matrix. To avoid detachment of the matrix actuator, the contact area between them was increased for these protruding samples on the side walls of the actuator, uh, with which a correct mat matrix actuator clamping can be assured. For the fabrication of the matrix, we use the hyperelastic silicon Ecoflex 0030 because of its high curing compatibility with a brown skin silicons and also for being easy handling since the Ecoflex is much more elastic and flexible than brown skin silicon. Um, to sum up, due to the design 2D configuration and the two combining hyperelastic material, the SPA is highly compact while dispersurized and also wearable because of being lightweight. Additionally, when the SPA is pressurized, an increasing in volume is observed only in one desired direction, making it also highly efficient. This feature was achieved by using the PET foil as the zero ear chamber and the mechanical programmation performed by varying the thickness of the actuator walls um, and their materials. Here we can see the dimensions of this model, which consists of three drawn skin SPAs embedded in an Ecoflex matrix. It's important to highlight that while layer two, this, uh, of the round skin layer, uh, layer three is made of uh, four millimeters of the round skin and Ecoflex, in addition to having the PET foil that forms a zero air chamber. So when the air, the air pressure, I mean, enters through the inlet channel, the energy concentrates toward layer two, displacing it more efficiently than layer three, since in this, there is a greater mechanical resistance due to the material and the configuration itself. So in layer three, there will be only a minimum displacement while in the greatest displacement will be observed in layer two. Additionally, because of this configuration, the total thickness of the equator is only six millimeters. Whoops. So um, it will be easy to configure it. And the dimensions of the soft robotics were obtained from anatomical measurements of the lower limbs and based on the design requirements. These dimensions allow the actuators to be placed on the specific structures. Um, and the complete system consists of seven drawn skin SPAs embedded in three Ecoflex matrix um, in such a way that they stimulate the desired muscle groups. Likewise, the vibration frequency between uh, 30 and 35 Hertz is used for mechanical simulation. Since at this frequency range, not only muscle power and neural motor function are intensified, but it also may improve blood flow and muscle oxygenation in the applied areas. Uh, reducing, obviously, uh, the play, uh, reducing the muscle weakness, pain, and inflammation. First, this first model has diagonal arrangement of the actuators for the stimulation of the gastrocnemius avoiding the pressure on the neurovascular bundles of this area, working analogously um, or equal the same to the peristaltic pump to induce an increased blood flow through the popliteal artery and vein. I mean, these are very anatomical, this uh, very anatomical point, very, very important. Second, here we can see the arrangements for superficial stimulation of the semitendinosus and bicep femoris muscle. Um, by muscular overlapping the semimembranosus and vasus lateralis muscles. In addition, here we can see the second model uh, stimulating the sartorius, vasus medialis, rectus femoris, and vasus lateralis muscles. Now, um, we have to test the performance of the SPA. A moment. Yep. Uh, so we perform a computational mechanical simulation to verify that indeed the mechanical programming and the designed configuration was properly uh, works properly obviously um, this we perform uh, were performed using the software ANSYS workbench in order to apply finite element analysis taking into account the following characteristics the main material was drawing skin 30 with three parameters Mooney Rivlin at 100 kilopascals as inlet maximum performance pressure for the memory chambers Additionally, we fixed the support um, in the actuator's external lateral side. As you can see, M1 and M2 represent the membranes 
the top membrane and the bottom membrane. And we want that M1 has more displacement or more deformation than M2 in order to increase its efficiency. And as you can see, um, we have to form many simulations. With, uh, with and without the PET foil. This has no PET foil, and this has the PET foil. And as you can see, with PET foil or PET foil, the deformation of M2 is lower than without a PET foil. So the efficiency increase in this. So with these results, the curve proves to be able to concentrate most of the energy in the desired direction, generating higher feed, uh, higher feed displacement to perform better stimulation. Therefore, it will have increased surface contact over the skin, thereby having a deeper effect on the lethargic muscle without risking the epithelial damage. In conclusion, the conceptual design of the novel soft robotic system was proposed, focused on mechanical properties using a wearable, lightweight, and compact, and efficient SPA embedded in a soft matrix, capable of exerting orthogonal pressure to stimulate muscles involved in the gait cycle. The system could be uh, employed during future Moon and Mars colonization missions. For this reason, it is necessary to be tested on analog space missions and astronaut training on Earth, such as Mars Research Dissertation in the USA or European Astronaut Center. Additionally, it would be great, really great, to work together with the Mars University for future collabor collaborations. Uh, on the other hand, the opportunities for applying this technology on the Earth in the clinical area are fast, are really big. From rehabilitation for patients with muscular atrophy caused by prostration after traumatic accidents, to physical therapy to people with neuromus neuromuscular diseases, and obviously muscle stimulation for people with sedentary lifestyles, such as in work office, remote work, or study from home as it is currently seen in this time of COVID-19 pandemic. So um, thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Muy duplicado. Hello. Thank you, Victor. It's wonderful. Yes, uh, thank you. Open the floor to any questions and comments and thoughts. Yes. Um, I have a question. So uh, it looks like a great, a great technology to apply for a lot of uh, different, uh, as you say, terrestrial applications. I'm wondering about the low G low gravity impacts though, uh, and what this would, you know, how this would play into that um, initial acclimation phase that astronauts experience in the low gravity in which, as I understood it, there was a, uh, um, a physical trigger essentially in a lack of gravity that caused uh, essentially the muscles to, you know, without the um, gravitational flow of blood towards your legs, that your, your body would essentially excrete the excess water and reduce blood volume. And I wonder if there's any, negative effects you see with like essentially trying to stimulate the, the body in zero G to retain that same muscle tone and, um, and blood flow. Um, I'm so sorry, I couldn't understand completely your question because I had a bad connection right now. Could you repeat it please? Because you're trying to stimulate it without, the, without gravity being present, right? Without actually, in, and so you're trying to retain the muscle sort of the, the blood volume and muscle size is okay. of the large of, the, of to that, um, just from a, you know, biophysical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Victor, I can, this is Terry Rector. I can help you with that if you need help with that question. Oh, yes, please. I would appreciate it. So the, the fluid shift occurs um, shortly after leaving uh, the the Earth's one G environment, and they NASA has been NASA as well as the the Russians, the other space agencies around the world have been trying for years to come up with adaptive measures. Um, it it basically your body gets rid of calcium, 
and fluid because it no longer feels that it needs it anymore. It's, it, the bone structure, the osteocast and the osteoblast go in and, and decompose your bones. That's the reason why a lot of times uh, us astronauts will end up with uh, um, uh, kidney stones uh, is because of the excess calcium that's no longer needed. So uh, they're, they're, the whole idea, um, well, the, the best way of preventing this is to have artificial gravity. So that gets you into the spinning uh, centrifugal kinds of spacecraft. Um, and, and that there is concern because once you go through the nine months of getting to eight months, nine months to getting to Mars, you are very concerned because when you get there, your body, uh, we all concerned, the body may not be able to adapt to Mars 1.6G uh, fast enough. So you may have to spend part of your time in the spacecraft readapting. So all of these methods like, uh, like Victor Head has, has demonstrated here are, are excellent opportunities for testing uh, before we start leaving one, you know, before we start leaving the Earth's, the Earth's uh, purview. So it, it, it is a big issue. Uh, and it affects a lot of different parts. Even you get the puffy face uh, uh, aspects of it where all your fluid shifts up. Your body's sensors then say, hey, wait a minute, my blood pressure is too high. You start uh, excreting liquids and then um, it, it, it affects the brain. It does a lot. That, that, that fluid shift up is a big issue. I hope that helps, I'm sorry. But that was that's excellent. And, and I guess I, you, you helped me clarify what I was really asking is that what this system would address is the muscle tone. Would that also do we do we think that we understand the biomechanisms well enough? Do we think that that would actually prevent the decalcification and kidney stones and all the other elements that you just referred to? you know or is this one part of the picture or would this make potentially make that worse because you're just accelerating the blood flow into areas with into the extremities but there still is no there's no gravity is the gravity what is the key or is this simulated blood flow going to actually contribute in a large way towards um uh, this would be helpful solving the problem it, okay. well you're still going to have the demineralization but it would definitely be helpful from the standpoint of your sensors, your, your, your neural system sensors will say, hey, wait a minute, we're getting blood flow here and everything else. So it, there's no one solution, but yeah. when you start combining these together is when you really, really end up with something that helps. Yeah, right yeah. now on the spacecraft, on the, on the ISS, they've got a weightlifting system up there uh -huh. and, and that really helps quite a bit too, but you do end up with a blood, especially when you're not physical, uh, mm -hmm. you end up with the slowing of the blood flow. Cool, great stuff, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that clarification. Um, yep, this is a complementary technology. I think it's very important to, uh, for example, make uh, intensive exercises in space. Uh, this is like a, yes, it's a complementary technology. It's not the, uh, the main technology to, stimulate the muscles or the blood flow. And also as future work, obviously we have to prove it first here in the clinical area um, where we will need a lot of permissions for that. And yeah, well, first of all, thank you for your feedback. Um, this very, very nutritive discussion. Wonderful. Uh, I love this approach. Victor, with uh, mechanical muscle stimulation um, and, and what you guys are doing with, with the biosim. Um, when we're reading about um, how something like 60% uh, like of the blood flow or something uh, reverses um, upward to our um, you know, head in, in microgravity and um, but you, you may consider also elaborating more on how much of the blood pools together, um, both in our legs. Uh, and I remember reading about uh, like there's some quantitative measurements uh, toward, toward blood pooling in the legs and in microgravity. Um, 
but um, it, it was a nice rooster, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, but also curious on, on how we could um, uh, kind of uh, see, see how much blood it flows away from the head and, and, and upper regions um, toward reducing uh, like, like sand. Um, and if, if we could potentially apply this concept on a, um, on a smaller scale and, and, and a nanoscale. Um, some thoughts. <laughs> Well, this is Terry again. I, I'm sorry, I can't shut up. Um, forcing them to accept what was happening to them. Uh, hey, David. Uh, so one of the key systems here on Earth that we use is a TENS machine. And I use it on my back quite a bit because I've got over 500 parachute jumps, 400 parachute jumps. And, and my spine has been correct, compressed over that time. Um, those kind of technologies, uh, NASA has got numerous different studies that have been proposed, and it all comes down to keeping the blood flowing, but then also to um, uh, keeping the fluid intake coming, and, and that whole cycle just is, 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 is never ending. Um, Right before the shuttle used to come in to land, usually within 12, 16 hours, the, uh, the, the pilot, well, the pilot and co-pilot used to do a, a fluid intake to replenish some of those fluids because what you really worry about getting back on Earth is what they call, uh, uh, it's, it's, a hype, it's a, the fluids drop back down and then your brain doesn't have enough fluid to process. Uh, orthostatic intolerance. And the same thing happens if you go and you sit in a dentist chair um, where you're about a three degree decline. When you go to get up, the same thing happens. And, and that's the biggest key is to prevent those moments um, that that one percent of terror that I was talking about, prevent that from occurring at the same time when you don't have enough blood flow. That's that's what you're worried about is those moments of, of, of uh, correlation. I hope that helps. Thanks for sharing. I think it definitely does. Yes. Um, awesome. Well, uh, yeah, we have uh, around you know several researchers uh, come close to like ten researchers and professors really interested in collaborating on the biomedical research side of things. So would uh, we'd be glad to explore future collaboration with with you guys and and. And bias and that would be exciting. Um.